scientists monitor the increased activity at the Big Island volcanoes. This is by Associated Press. We've seen recent deformation and tremendous seismic activity on the Big Island, especially around Kilauea, and it seems that it has more activity and more deformation than it, deformation than it had when it erupted last year, just about this time. It could be, from what the geologists were telling us when it stopped in August, that it could be in a pause phase. We'll see what happens in the meantime. Um, concerning this article, Hilo, Hawaii, scientists in Hawaii are monitoring increasing activity surrounding one of the Big Island volcanoes. We're talking about the Hawaii Volcano Observatory. They have an observer, USGS has an observatory there, right at the tip of the volcano, the Haluma'umau crater. The Hawaii Volcano Observatory is closely monitoring Mauna Loa because conditions have risen to levels comparable to a more active period between 2014 and 2017. This is what the Hawaii Tribune Herald reported. Uh, this uh, was about uh, three weeks ago, and it's still the activity is still there. With quakes, we'll see that later on when we get into the exact uh, activity, what's going on. It's er too early to predict, they say, possible outcomes of Mauna Loa's activity, according to Tina Neal, who is the observatory scientist in charge there. She said an eruption could be anywhere from months to years away, but we do not know that uh, we do know that it's not days or weeks away. She says there have been increased earthquakes and ground deformation around Mauna Loa summit. Earthquakes on Mauna Loa dropped to less than five per week in early 2018, but there have been up to 90 earthquakes weekly since August with a most considered mild at two magnitude or less on the Richter scale. Gas monitoring equipment at Mauna Loa summit has not detected any emerging fumes, she said. And the most important thing, she says, is that there is no cause for alarm. An eruption last year, as we said, by Hilawea's, uh, Hawaii's Kilauea volcano destroyed more than 700 homes from May through August. Kilauea's current alert status is normal. Uh, now, it is not normal. I'll show you what it is, uh, on, according to the USGS. Now, Kilauea's eruption came shortly after a decrease in volcanic activity at Mauna Loa, but Neil said there is no perfect correlation between the volcanoes indicating one always becomes active as the other falls silent. Uh, that's because they share the same magma chamber. We, we did a video on that. Uh, they not only Mauna Loa and Kilauea, but Loihi, all three of them, uh, they have the same magma chamber. It's as if there's like three vents going uh, uh, vertically upward. One is Mauna Loa, the other is Kilauea, the other one is the Loihi Seamount off the coast. Now, there is some geological basis to suggest a pattern, and Mauna Loa's act increased activity would test that hypothesis. Um, now let's go and see what we're, uh, what kind of uh, alert level they have. Okay, we're here at the uh, USGS Volcano Hazards Program. We just, I just took a look at uh, Yellowstone. Um, as you can see, this is the caldera and the caldera lake. Uh, even though this is a super volcano, Yellowstone is a super volcano stretching as from what they say all the way down to the border of Mexico and up towards almost Hudson Bay in Canada. The threat potential here is high. Uh, composition basalt rhyolite, last eruption 70,000 years ago, even though the geologists, as we know, they come up with Caldera Chronicle in the announcements every week. They say that the explosion is overdue by 10,000 years, and uh, it explodes about every 1,000 years. Uh, not with a huge eruption, but with smaller eruptions, which can do local damage anyway. But let's go now to uh, back to Hawaii, the Hawaii volcanoes. Here we go. We're going to, um, uh, let's go to uh, Mauna Loa first. Okay. And this is Mauna Loa. It's, it's the biggest uh, volcano in the world. When we're talking about undersea uh, mass and everything. And we see the potential here is very high. 
very high potential. It's the Earth's most active, among the Earth's most active volcano, erupted 33 times since its first well-documented historic eruption in 1843. And um, it last erupted in 1984 when the lava flow came within four and a half miles of Hilo, which is uh, right towards this area right here, Hilo Bay, Hilo. And um, let's move out a little bit if you can see it better. That's Hilo over here. And uh, as we can see, it's the one lower, this is Mauna Kea, and this is um, Kilauea. And the Loihi Seamount is up there. In 1984, when lava flow came within four and a half miles of Hilo, largest population center, Mauna Loa is certain to erupt again. And with such a propensity to produce large flows, we carefully monitor the volcano for signs of unrest. And we see that uh, if we go to Sizemore well, Berkeley, and here we are on the map of Hawaii, the big island, and we see the, the, the yellow or the past weeks, the yellow uh, squares are the past week's uh, earthquakes. The blue are the day's earthquakes. Now uh, this one here on uh, Kilauea, as we can see, is pretty big. It's a, a three magnitude, a very shallow depth. Okay, it's right near uh, right at Kilauea. Um, and uh, it's going back to Mauna Loa, though. This is Loihi, by the way, the seamount over here, and this is Mauna Loa. Very high threat. Now let's move back to... Uh, should we go to Mauna Kea just swiftly? Mauna Kea. As we know, that's Mauna Kea on the side there. This is Mauna Kea, what it looks like. It's pretty high up. And... Threat potential is moderate. Most recent eruption, four to 6,000 years ago. Mauna Kea means White Mountain, also known because of the fact that it snowed over. Uh, Mauna, or Wakaya, is uh, the first poor mountain son of Wakaya. All right, there it is, snow topped. Now let's go to Kilauea. Quickly moving on, Kilauea. is very high potential. In the article it said it was normal. It's not normal. It has green, unfortunately, but it's very high potential. Uh, Kilauea, home of Pele. Uh, the caldera is site of nearly continuous activity in the 19th century and the early part of the 20th. In 52, there have been 34 eruptions since then. January 1983, eruptive activity has been continuous along the east rift zone, which is this thing here on the, on the east, right here. And uh, in March 2008, the vent also opened in Halemaumo crater. I don't know how to say that, Halemaumo or Halemaumau. Hale, Hale, Hale uh, there's two different ways I've heard of the uh, USGS geologist pronouncing that. Halimamau crater at the volcano summit. The summit crater hosts an active lava pond and the vigorous gas plume. Kilauea ranks among the world's most active volcanoes and may even top the list. It's very high. Very high. Now let's go to... Uh, let's go to one of these here. This is today's. This is today's. Volcano, 2.2 uh, magnitude. Uh, let's go to the aerial. And let's zoom in a little bit. There, there we go. Now, this is the area of the latest flow, as we can see. Uh, the bay has been basically filled in. And this is the one that we, is this the one that we saw? No, we're just going in more. No, I don't want to go in more. I want to see the details of that. Okay, so we saw that that was a magnitude 2.2, uh, 13 kilometers south of the volcano, and it's at 8.1 kilometers depth. We saw the other one that was uh, 
well, six here, but 8.1, the other one, uh, we saw that the other ones were a lot more shallow. Well, this one is even deeper, two at a 29.8 kilometer depth, but this one here was only a three point magnitude the day before, uh, yesterday, a uh, few hours before, at a 1.4 kilometers depth. But three is pretty big, as you can see. And that's Kilauea. And you can see the, um, the area is really rocking. That's the crater. That's the crater right there. Right there. Let's go in. That's at a minus one. And let's go to the uh, aerial. Again, it's not a very good image at all, of course. It just tells us basically where the um, the earthquake was at the rim of the um, of the crater. Isn't that something? And you can get a very good idea of the activity that's going on. That's as close as we're going to get. So we saw that the uh, deformation is going on, the activity is pretty strong, and uh, the fact is that it is not a normal level, it's at a very high threat level. And it may just be taking a little bit of a break. So those people living in that area, please be careful, please be ready, just in case it happens again as it happened last year. You may only, only have a, a few hours of uh, uh, warning and from what we know people are told to keep away from that area anyway, from the, the crater area. Alright, so I just wanted to uh, show you the update on this on the uh, Hawaii Volcano Observatory having to do with uh, Tina Neal's uh, updates. She's the uh, geologist in charge of the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, and she has the ranking of the Big Island volcanoes. Kilauea and Mauna Loa are very high threat potential. Very high threat potential. Okay, moderate is Mauna Kea. High, Kilauea and Mauna Loa are very high threat potential. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Um, she talks about volcanic and uh, sort of official sedimentary deposits. Uh, all right, she goes through, you know, basically, you can listen to what she has to say in her March 29 discussion um, on the island conversations, but uh, she has it listed as very high threat potential, just for you to be informed. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.